it wouldn't be 2020 without some kind of glitch. So we're just going to roll with it. And I know we've got some more people in here now, which is awesome. So we're going to get started here pretty soon, just for those of you just joining us. So this is our final Crabmas Monday video, and we decided to go live with you guys for the holidays. We're out of school, and so we have a little bit of time to set this up, and we thought this would be fun. And so we're so glad that you guys are here to cook a Christmas dinner for our hermit crabs. And I hope that you guys get some good ideas of things that you can cook up pretty easily um, in your home and things that our hermit crabs absolutely love. And so maybe you want to give your hermit crabs a try with these foods if you haven't already. And also, this is a live question and answer session while I'm cooking. So please feel free to send us all of your questions and I'll answer as many as I can while I'm cooking here. Um, Brooke is behind the camera, and so she will um, call off your questions for me. Um, yeah, so let's get started, you guys. So what we are gonna be cooking is breakfast shrimp tacos, and we're gonna have two different side dishes as well. I'll go over those when we get them started. And so the first thing that I have to cook up is the actual taco shell, which we are going to be making out of egg whites. So here we go. Look, it's like hermit crabs and a cooking show comes together. Hey, by the way, I never cook at home. Ever. I'm not the cook. But I cook for my hermit crabs. I'm not sure what that says. Okay, what I'm putting in this little pan right here is some organic natural coconut oil. Can y'all see that? Okay, and so hermit crabs love coconut. And you just want to make sure that the things that you guys are using are all natural, like one ingredient products or not whole, whole ingredients, I guess is the better thing to say. Um, you don't want any kind of processed food or added sugars or added salt. Um, even a lot of the added um, spices and things aren't good for your hermit crabs. So that's what you're really looking for as you buy different foods and things. So once again, I just have some coconut oil in here so that my eggs don't stick. All right, we just got a 99 cent donation from Faith. Thank you so much, Faith. We really appreciate it. And I'm going to read off some questions. Let's see, what should I feed my baby hermit crabs? So, um, if you haven't already watched our video of um, 101 food guide, then I would suggest that you do that because there's all different kinds of food groups that hermit crabs need to have a well-balanced diet. And so um, that is super important. And so go ahead and do that if you haven't already. But there's so many different things that um, hermit crabs can eat. And so, um, so yeah, check that out. And pretty much a lot of the things that we eat, your hermit crabs can also eat. So, um, I'll go over some more of those as we're cooking here to give you some ideas. So an egg. I need an egg. <laughs> All right, was it? A, do you have any more questions? Because while well, we're getting the egg, we <laughs> forgot an egg. Okay, the next question is: What is the best substrate brand for hermit crabs? Oh, okay. Hey, so five to one ratio is what you're looking for um, of clay sand to eco earth. And we just get play sand um, at like Home Depot or Lowe's and it's super cheap. You get 50 pounds um, in one bag. And so, thanks. So yeah, it's like $5 a bag. And then Eco Earth, you can buy it in the bricks or you can buy it in the bag, which is already constituted and you can do either of those. So whatever you have time for. The thing is with the bricks is you have to add water to constitute them and then you need to give yourself enough time for that to dry out before you put it in your habitat. Because if you put it in all wet, um, has a chance of growing mold and bacteria and things like that. So you definitely wanna wait. All right guys, so we got the egg. And um, just gonna separate it here, use this little separator because I only want the egg white to make the actual taco shell. So actually your crabs can eat this eggshell itself and we have eggshells in our tanks a lot. Usually when we make like scrambled eggs or something for them, we actually serve it in the half shell. 
Um, but tonight's special, so we're not going to. But yeah, they love eggshells. They love the little goop inside the eggshell too. So you can also include all of that. You don't have to rinse them out or anything. So what are we making? I think you forgot to say. We're making breakfast shrimp tacos. All right, so our next question is, is Zoomed a good brand? For like leaders or like they make a lot of different things. So which product are you talking yeah. about? Uh, Depends on what you're buying. EcoWorth Zoomed brand. Dirt is good, someone says. Do yeah. hermit crabs get lonely if their friend goes down to molt? That's a great question. Boy, if our hermit crabs could talk, wouldn't that be great? So, you know, I've seen sometimes like a little bit maybe different behavior when that happens, but I think, you know, they, they're they always going down and coming back up. So I think we can, I mean, I don't know. I think it's probably just nature. Like crabs are crabs and that's what they do. So, you know, I think if we just keep buying more crabs, to put in there because one goes down, like it will be in this eventual, you know, unending cycle. And so I think it's just part of it. And when your friend comes back from old camp, like big party and they'll be super excited. So yeah, I think really the best thing to do is just make sure that you have enrichment in the tank all the time, just so that they have things to do, um, you know, whether their friends are down molting or not. All right, so this like, Thing right here is a little silicone. Actually, it's by, we got an HEB. Oh, if you don't live in Texas, you don't have HEB. Walmart, maybe? I don't know. It's like, it actually is for eggs. The perfect egg is what it's called. I guess you can make egg sandwiches. And so that's how I'm making a perfect circle for my little taco. And basically, I'm just gonna let it cook through and then flip it here for just a minute. All right, is just EcoWorth okay for substrate? No. Do not want just Eco Earth because it becomes um, kind of acidic. And then when your crabs are down molting, that could become a problem. Um, and also, Eco Earth, well, the reason we use Eco Earth is because it actually holds moisture really, really well. And since we need a humid environment in our crab habitat, that's, that's what the Eco Earth is for. But if you have only Eco Earth, it holds too much moisture. And then that's where you have the problems with the molding and the bacterial growth and those type of things. And so all Eco Earth is not um, a good idea. Also, it's very much lighter. The Eco Earth is very light and kind of airy and fluffy. Um, and the sand has a little bit more dense structure to it. And the two of them mix together at that five to one ratio is what really makes it great for the crabs when they start to dig down and molt. They can create these great tunnels and these caves where it's safe, so. All right, is there a difference in adults from baby hermit crabs? A difference in the way they behave or act or eat or, I'm not sure the exact question. Clarify for me, because I don't really know for sure what you're asking and I wanna make sure I answer your question. Uh, All right, so I flipped the egg, guys. Just gonna make sure the other side is good and cooked, and then we'll move on to the next step. Why is my biggest hermit crab eating plastic and my smaller one isn't? I don't know how to stop her. So she actually, you're seeing her eat the plastic and not just pick it off and like little pieces are left in the tank? Because if that's the case, I would remove whatever it is that's being eaten. We've had that a couple times, like some little plastic flower or whatever that we decorated the tank with, they start to pick it at it. And then if I don't see the pieces on the sub, I just take it out for whatever reason that they're wanting that. So I would try to add some other things that they can forage for because maybe that's what they're looking for. So leaf litter or bark, um, flowers are great. Um, millet is another really good thing. So I would definitely try to find some foraging items. Are you planning on getting some of Mary's new exotic babies? We were just talking about this morning. <laughs> yeah, I would love some baby strawberries. So we have two strawberry crabs, but they're both males, unless one of them eventually turns into female. So there's really no hope of us <laughs> um, breeding strawberries. 
so if I could get a female strawberry from Mary, then that would be awesome. So yes, I would love, love, love. Okay guys, so here's our taco shell. Okay, so what we're gonna put in the taco itself is some scrambled egg. And so I'm just gonna take this yolk that we separated before and add it to my pan here and scramble it up. They love scrambled eggs. It's great protein for them. All right, the next question. Um, is a 30 inch wide tank good for three hermit crabs? 30 inch wide see. tank. So I'd have to look up exactly what gallon that would be. How wide is it? So it's 30 long. Is it 12 inches wide or 18 inches wide? And then how tall is it? And then I can tell you. Um, 30 inches long might be a 20 gallon long tank. So once we get the width, we can let you know. Okay. All right, guys, so I scrammed up these eggs. I'm gonna put a few here on our taco. Oh, I thought I was. There we go. So we're gonna put some other things in here so I don't want too many eggs. There we go. And then I'm gonna put the extra in my bowl right here. All right, the next question is, I'm a new crab mom. After a molt, how much of a size increase should I expect? That is a great question. And um, honestly, nobody knows the answer to that or we didn't know the answer to that before captive bred babies um, because there was no way to know when the crab was born or came to land. And so really 2018 is the first captive bred babies that are now out with different adopters. And we actually track their growth every three months and we and track what kind of shells they wear, how often they're molting, what they like to eat, what their daily activities are, all those kinds of things. And come to find out after almost two years, well, a year and a half, I guess, of tracking that, they're all growing at different rates. There's no consistency with any one household or across the board. So when they molt, they all grow at different rates and we really actually don't have a scientific reasoning behind that just yet. So we're still collecting data on that and um, coming up with some theories as to what's causing it and making some changes in our habitats. And so, yeah, great question, but we don't have the answer. All right, guys, the next thing I'm gonna put in here is I'm gonna put a little bit more of this oil and then we're actually going to go ahead and start up the shrimp. All right, the next question is, can I use just Eco Earth even if I clean the Eco Earth out every three months? You don't wanna clean out your substrate. For one, your crabs are going to be molting. You never want to dig up a crab and disturb their molt. And it's very stressful to the crabs when you take them out of their crab habitat and do things like that. You guys are just cutting up a bell pepper right here. Um, our crabs love bell peppers. All, all different colors of bell peppers. And so, sorry, I'm just, I was going to start the shrimp, but I changed my mind. I'm going to do the bell peppers first. Okay. So yeah, you don't want to change out your substrate. It's too stressful. It's not necessary. You might have molters down and then waiting for all the crabs to come up to be able to switch your, it'd be like a nightmare. So the only time that you want to change out your substrate, honestly, is if you have some kind of bug infestation that are bad for your hermit crabs or mold or bacteria blooms. Um, otherwise, just, yeah, just leave your sub alone, which really makes like the maintenance easier on us too, honestly. So, so we have an entire video about substrate if you want to check that out. We just don't recommend Eekworth by itself. All right. Uh, can they eat just, can they just eat pressed or fine coconut oil by itself? Yeah, you can. Sure. I mean, be careful what you're serving it in because it might knock it over, then it'll get all into your substrate. I don't know that I'd give them like a big dish of it, but you know, our dishes that we usually use are like this small and you could put a little bit on there or you could pour it over something else that you're going to be cooking. All right, so I already put the bell pepper in. I'm going to add some carrots 
and these are already cut up because time. So carrots are great for your hermit crabs, guys. All right, the next question. I am worried one of my hermit crabs is not eating like normal. I give him a variety of foods. Any tips? Um, how long have you had him? And is he in PBS? Um, PPBS. Um, there's so many factors with that. A lot of times the hermit crabs are eating at night. We don't even know it. They are nocturnal. So just because you're not seeing them eat doesn't necessarily mean they're not eating. And um, if they're in the PPS tank, could be just really, really stressed. You have to offer different foods every night when they're in PPS to kind of find something that they're interested in, all the different food groups. You know, something that's really hard for them to resist is worm castings and green sand. So if you haven't tried that, like I haven't seen a crab yet, turn that down. <laughs> so it's a good way to kind of just jumpstart their appetite. So you might not know this, but crabs like spicy food. So this is a jalapeno. We're going to be adding that to the fish taco. All right, so... Hi, Serena. You guys, we just did a video for Serena, and she is with Cena Beta Creations. So you should go check out her store on Etsy. She's actually the one I'm putting, this is why I'm putting jalapeno in here, because of her Tex-Mex omelet, and our crabs love it, so I'm like, we're putting jalapeno in here. Okay, so so far I have jalapeno and bell pepper and carrots, and they're just sauteing in coconut oil. And while these are cooking down, I'm going to start cutting up some stuff for our other dish. Um, so the one with the baby and adult hermit crab care, they're talking about is there a difference in the care between the ages of hermit crabs? Okay. Um, so the biggest difference is just that you have to make sure the babies have a good way in and out of their pools because they are so tiny. Um, and they definitely need you got to make sure that they always have access to um, like eggshell or an exo mix that you can get. We buy ours from Mary Acres, um, or like lobster and crab shell. We use a lot. Um, they really need a lot um, of those things because they molt more often. And so they just always need to have access to those type of things for their exoskeleton. And I would say, the other thing that we're learning is that they need a little bit more moisture in the sub because they don't carry as much shell water since they're so tiny. But that's kind of a delicate balance that, you know, all of us kind of new to raising baby hermit crabs are trying to figure out because, you know, you don't want to overdo it. And so we're trying to figure out what's the best balance of that. But yeah, those are the two main or three main things I would say. Um, that are different, but they eat all the same foods. Um, of course, you have to have the little tiny shells for them. That's with any crab, though. You gotta have their right size shell. So, all right. Uh, how do you clean the tank if you don't take out the substrate? Um, like just the glass. We're trying to clean. Like, like with animals, usually clean out their tank, and so. They're saying, how do you keep it clean for your hermit crabs? Yeah, I mean, the sub is bioactive. So if you have like a lot of waste, like crab poop, then you can try, there are some bioactive things that are safe to house together, which would be isopods or springtails. And if you are not a part of Land Owners Land hermit. hermit Crab Owners Society Facebook, then go over there because there's lots of talks about isopods and how they work and if people like them and that sort of thing and springtails and so if that's something you're worried about um then you know that's a good way to kind of get a cleanup crew natural cleanup crew but your tank is you know the the poop will decompose and and that sort of thing the crabs also eat it actually so yeah but you can also just kind of take a scoop and you know, just remove it from the top of the soil gently. I think it looks like a lot of it, you know, or leftover food and things like that. Just remove it by hand, but you don't have to remove the, the soil, the substrate. 
And then you can just take a paper, well, what we do for the glass, we just take a paper towel, um, spray it with a little bit of water, and we clean the inside of the glass that way. And we usually do that every couple of days, actually. Right. It's not like a hamster or, or a guinea pig where you have to clean it up because they're constantly, like, peeing in their environment. So right. it's a little bit different for them. Right. Okay, I'm going to start the shrimp now. And um, these actually still have... The shell, is that what you call that? Mm -hmm. The shell on there? Guys, I don't like seafood. So, ugh. <laughs> I'm gonna do it anyway, because the crabs love it. Luckily, this one's deveined. I don't have to do that. So, um, I was just gonna let you know that this shell on here is great for your hermit crabs. Like I was just talking about, especially the babies, but all hermit crabs need this. So, you can actually keep this shell and um, dehydrate it if you want in your oven, like on the lowest level, or you could wash it and put it in with their dinner that night. Uh, well, you don't have to wash it actually, but yeah, put it in there and they'll eat, they'll eat the shell also, which is really good for them. But because it's fancy Christmas dinner, we're going to take the shell off. So it's not, and doesn't make their breakfast taco, taco crunchy, but I am going to save it for later another day. And all shellfish needs to be cooked. Yeah, for your hermit so. crabs. Oh, <laughs> All right, is it okay to mix green sand and worm castings into the substrate? Um, we do not recommend or advise you to add anything to your substrate other than the five parts clay sand to one part eco earth. Um, there's been a lot of research done on that, on amendments in the in the sub. And after years and years of research, um, they found that the best way to keep healthy substrate that you're not having to change out and, you know, worry about is just use the place in the door. Um, you know, and they can forage for the green sand and the worm castings, you know, just in their tank. We usually put it in a little bowl for them. And they love it. You know, and put it in a bowl like that, they just go like, I don't know. It reminds me of like a pig wallowing in mud or something. Like they just love their worm poop. So yeah, it's good just that way. It makes it easier for you too than to replace and know that they need more. I don't know. I just think it's easier to put in a dish and research says that's best for the sub. So there you go. Okay, All right. another one of these yucky guys. All right. What is your next video about? <laughs> <laughs> good question. Uh, we talked a lot about water pools because we have not done one on water pools and we get a lot of questions about that. So I know that we'll be doing that one pretty soon. Um, we also want to give you guys kind of um, a sneak peek into raising baby hermit crabs um, and what that entails. The Zoe, not the one, the already land hermit crabs we got from Mary. Yes, true, the Zoe. So, you know, this summer we had Gunther that um, spawned eggs, and so we tried our best to bring little baby Zoe onto land. We didn't make it this year, but we're not giving up, and so if our crabs give us um, more Zoe this summer, we'll try again. But we did do a lot of recording, um, you know, of the process and what it looks like and what's involved and so we have a lot of footage of that so I know that'll be coming up too. But we don't know exactly what video will be next. Alright, is it normal for a hermit crab to remove food from its food dish and place it in random spots in the tank? Yes, and you know sometimes hermit crabs will like shove the food in their shell. <laughs> so they're just going to save it for later. Right, yeah, so that's not abnormal. You know, if you're seeing that a lot, maybe adding a second bowl to your tank would be helpful because maybe for some reason they're feeling threatened that they're not going to be able to have enough or something. I don't know. So spreading it out to a couple different places might help. Um, but yeah, we've had hermit crabs drag stuff around the tank before. Um, so yeah. They're scavengers. It's not really a bad thing if they do that. Um, that's what they do. <laughs> All right. Okay, I added a little bit of more coconut oil in here for these shrimp. 
Just trying to get them, make sure that they're cooked all the way. They're starting to turn pink. Do hermit crabs need pooper scoopers? Yeah, so that's kind of what we were talking about earlier with just a cleanup crew. If you want a natural cleanup crew, then you can get isopods or springtails. Um, or if you prefer not to do that, then you can just, they make these little shovel things that have like holes in them, kind of sifters, I guess. And you could go just gently on the surface and sift out the poop and stuff like that. Don't. To be honest with you guys, we have never done that. Like we've never done that in any of our tanks. So I think you're good. I mean, like we said, hermit crabs are scavengers and they poop. They like it a lot. Yeah. They'll eat I'm their like, own. I'm cooking you this and you're eating poop. What? <laughs> you want to show a close up of what's going on in the pan? Yeah. Let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, there so we go. Shrimp and carrots and bell peppers and jalapenos and coconut oil. Oh, that's hot. And we're just about done. Remember too that we have the scrambled egg over here as well on our shell. All right, do we have any isopods or springtails in our tanks? Great question. So we tried isopods in one of our tanks and we decided to not have them anymore. <laughs> if that tells you anything. Well, she's kind of scared of bugs, so she didn't like them very much. True. But they're great to have if you don't mind bugs. <laughs> True. All right. That. I am sorry. I don't like them. Okay. She doesn't like bugs or seafood. <laughs> I'm going to add some of those to our taco here. And I'm going to put the rest over here for another taco later. Okay. Oh, that smells good. All right, and then we're going to top our taco off with some avocado. All right. All right, look, here's our taco, you guys. It's very stuffed full of things. <laughs> The egg white actually does kind of look like a tortilla. It does a little bit. Now if it'll just stay closed, it's too full. It's too full of yummies. All right. This is going to be a video of Darcy struggling to keep the tacos closed. <laughs> it's okay to mix their food together in one dish. Yes. Yeah, for sure. That's what we usually do. You can mix it up or keep it separate, whatever you prefer, really. They don't care. Actually, because I am who I am, I usually like put it nicely in little piles on the dish and then it's so pretty. Well, y'all seen pictures we've taken. Yeah, then we put it in there and they mess it all up like in a second. I'm like, guys, you have no appreciation for aesthetics. <laughs> They're gonna demolish the crab taco tonight. Yeah. Um, all right, I'm gonna start the side dish. So we saute some um, mushrooms. Is there a certain brand of salt drops you use for salt pool? Uh, we don't use drops. We use Instant Ocean and um, or Reef Crystals. Those are the only two that we recommend. Um, that's yeah. That's that's it. Just use those. <laughs> well, if you're in a different country, there might be other brands. Yeah, true. But uh, if you need to know some other brands that are safe, you can ask us, and we will send you those separately. Uh, is it okay not to feed worm castings and green sand? Um. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it's something you have to feed them, but you know, they love it and. It's good for them. Um, they're pretty re readily available. If you don't want to buy like the big bags of it, then you can just go on Crab Street Journal's website and you can buy smaller bags of it, very reasonable. I know Mary Acres also sells some. Um, some of the other food you know, vendors have that as well where you can just buy small bags of it. Mm -hmm. So. That works, but like a huge bag of room castings at Home Depot was $8, seven, seven, $8. Yeah, and then it'll last us nearly the whole year. 
So I would definitely just do that. Yeah. So it's not ne it's not necessarily something you have to feed, but it's really healthy for your crabs and it's something that we recommend that you feed. Yeah. Alright guys, I'm gonna add to our saute right here some pecans. Our crabs absolutely love nuts and pecans especially. So I'm just gonna kind of break them up into pieces. So mushrooms and pecans. Okay, who would actually eat this so far? Yeah. Would eat what I've cooked. <laughs> Not me, because I don't like seafood. Uh oh, I threw a pecan. But somebody, maybe somebody out there will eat this. Um How to know the gender of hermit crabs. Um, if you are wondering, it would be better to personal message us so that we can actually send you a picture. It's kind of hard to describe without a picture. And it's really hard to see. Like, you kind of just wait for your crabs to give you a peek because to actually try <laughs> and do that, it's going to stress them out quite a bit. Yeah. But if they're climbing near the glass and stuff or in the pools, sometimes you can actually tell. But there are several of our crabs we still don't know. And actually, it's not even worth stressing over because when they molt, they can change sex. So... You know, your mister could be a miss in a few months anyway, so. All right. If I bought a crab that is in a painted shell and put it in an ISO with natural shells, will it still be toxic at all when I move it in with my current crabs? Will it be toxic to the other crabs, I mean? Um, so if you're, you can't force your crab to change shells. So we just have to keep offering natural shells that are in the right size and certain crabs do prefer different shape openings and we have a video about shells that can help you out with that too. Um, so check that out. But you know, you can't make them change. So your crab being in the regular tank, still wearing the painted shells, not going to hurt your other crabs. But when they do change shells, you want to remove the painted one as quickly as possible. So. All right. We will be posting this on our channel afterwards. Is bottled salt water okay? No. So the bottled salt water is not the correct salinity um, that you're looking for for your hermit crabs. And so, and it's so expensive. You know, your instant um, ocean or your reef crystals is going to last you. And we've only bought like two boxes total, I would say. I think we. Well, without the raising the babies. Well, yeah. Because we had, we had oh, used yeah. a lot of salt water for them. Okay, raising babies is a whole other thing. We bought like a <laughs> five gallon like a bucket of salt for them. Five gallon bucket of salt for them. Yeah, but normally, like that stuff lasts a really long time. It's well worth, I know it's kind of expensive up front, but it will last you a long time. What, I mean, you will spend way more on that bottled salt water. Trust mm -hmm. me, that's not worth your money. So, and it's really not that hard to mix up your salt water. So. Okay. So earlier today, because this would have taken too long on camera, but we made some quinoa, which your hermit crabs can eat cooked or uncooked. But we went ahead and cooked ours, and so it's a multi-grain quinoa. And um, so that is what we're going to use kind of as the bed for our yummy mushrooms and pecans right here. All right, so someone asked is... Dry, non-cooked corn, safe for hermit crabs because I'm making their dinner. Dry, non-cooked corn. Just like regular corn. Yeah. Dry though. I'm sure it's fine. Yeah, so kind of like, just kernel, like dehydrated kernels of corn. Yeah, it's totally fine. Okay. Can y'all see this? Mushrooms and pecans, toasted in coconut oil, and we're going to put that right here on our quinoa. So far, nobody said they would eat this. Well, I probably haven't gotten to the bottom of the okay. comments yet. Oh, sorry guys, I'm zooming in. It's a little bit sensitive on here. Uh, all right. Where can you find a 20 gallon tank for $50 or less? Definitely look for the dollar per gallon sale at Petco. 
and you'll be able to get a 20 gallon tank for $20. They do them four times a year, each different season, I think. Okay, for our last side dish, we are going to put together fruit salad on a bed of coconut shavings. You see a theme here with coconut. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna put this down first. Is Toughen Beta water conditioner okay to mix in their fresh water? No, you don't want any kind of conditioners. You really only need the prime um, in your pools. That's the only thing that you want to use, so. Mm -hmm. no. All right, guys, we're gonna start with the mango. If you haven't tried giving your hermit crabs mango, mm. <laughs> it's all good. Um, some people said they would eat it. Yeah. I'm um, gonna eat the fruit salad. <laughs> so for the prime, you wanna use it in both your salt and your fresh water. It's cecum prime and it dechlorinates the water as well as takes out any ammonia in the water. And it also adds special minerals that they need. Okay, we also have blueberries. I'm just gonna cut them up. Smaller. Where is your current favorite place to get shells for a reasonable price? We actually only buy shells from um, Can what they read they? Uh, we, there's, I think, a link in all of our videos at the bottom that you can find the shell store. Mm -hmm. The shell store dot com. Dot com, yeah. And he is great at helping you find the right sizes and very well aware of hermit crabs and their need for shells and growth shells and stuff. And so it's always really good when you're dealing with people that are familiar with hermit crabs because, as you know, from pet stores and beach shops, if they don't know about hermit crabs, you can get a lot of incorrect information. And so that's what I love about, you know, working with Ken is that he gets us crazy crab people. <laughs> All right, so I just cut up a raspberry. And now I have some kiwi. I would eat this kiwi, but it's a little bit tart. The crabbies won't care. Uh, can hermit crabs have ham or turkey? Yeah, so they can. However, you don't... Probably, um, well, it depends, I guess, but first of all, you don't want any preservatives. So like your regular old lunch meat, ham and turkey, wouldn't be a good option. Um, I don't know, like at the grocery store, sometimes you can now buy actual turkey and ham that they'll cut off for you. So it's not processed, but it might be seasoned. And or so, cured. Or cured, yeah. So that still would not work. But if you buy yourself a ham or you buy yourself a turkey, and you don't season it, then yes, they can eat that. All right, next I'm going to cut up some grapes. By the way, you don't actually have to cut up all this fruit when you put it in the tank because they will pinch at it and eat it without doing that, but it's Christmas dinner, so we're getting fancy in here. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, we usually do cut it up anyway, so. Because we have so many different tanks and so we need to make a lot of different dishes, and the food goes a lot further if I cut them into smaller pieces um, than just putting whole kiwi in there or something like that. But we don't usually cook a whole meal like this no. every night. Yeah. yeah. This is a little, this is extra. All right, it's Christmas. And now, banana. All right. If I buy a lot of dry foods, like from Mary and Tina Vita Creations, what kind of percent should the diet be dry versus fresh foods? Oh, that's a great question. So there's no percentage between fresh food and dry food. First of all, I would offer both and see which of the two your hermit crabs really prefer because I know from group, our group that, you know, we're on different crabs like seem to prefer different ones. So first I would do that. And then um, <coughs> give them more often the one that they prefer and um, change it up every now and then, give them something new because they can always you know, prefer something later. But yeah, as far as actually needing one over the other, that's, that's not the case. However, they do need the different food groups. And I think especially you guys, a lot of times we don't give enough protein. And if you're finding your crabs being kind of aggressive in their tank toward other crabs, it's, it could very much mean that you're not giving them enough protein. 
um, if you're having trouble with molting, you know, they're coming at missing legs or deformed or something like that, um, it, it could be substrate issues, but it could also be that they're not getting enough omega fats or chitin and things like that in their diet. So it really is important that they have all the different food groups. And so that's really the main thing. And you can get all those food groups in dry food just as much as you can in, you know, in the fresh, fresh foods. So, you know, budget is part of it too. I know there's been time where, you know, it works better for us to do the dry food with our time and, you know, we can buy a bunch in bulk at, at one point and just have it. And then there's other times where, you know, we've got lots of time to sit down and cook, you know, a 30 minute dinner for them. So, yeah. All right, random question, but I can I keep two different crab species together? Yes, absolutely. We keep all our crabs together and we have seven different species and they get along great. Again, protein is huge. I can't stress it enough. Like a lot, we offer several protein choices every night. So that's a big part of it that you wanna make sure. Okay, in this little jar here, we have um, freeze dried strawberries. And so to top off fruit, our coconut fruit salad, I am just gonna crush up a dried strawberry on top because it's pretty slime. <laughs> uh, some people are saying they want to make their crabs dinner too. Yes, do it. It's so fun. I mean, I don't like to cook for my human family, but I love to cook for my crab family. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what that says about me. So I'm not sure. <laughs> All okay. right. So the last thing that we need to do I just don't like to cook, I don't know. I'm not big on it, but my husband loves to cook, so it works fine. <laughs> and I clean, he cooks and I clean. So it's good for everybody. Okay, I'm taking cilantro. Oh my goodness, our crabs go crazy for cilantro. And I'm just sprinkling it over the top of the um, quinoa, mushroom, and pecan. All right. Where can I adopt hermit crabs? Oh, you know, we can put a link. Oh, we have links. Okay, I don't know if you follow us on our Facebook group, um, but if you go there, we will put the link. It's on some of our videos. If you go to CrabCon um, or the baby, I think spray foam background video we have, or even the baby buying baby supplies reading the summer. I think mean, we have several videos that in the description of the video is the link to adopt hermit crabs. Um, you can also go to Land Hermit Crab Owner Society Facebook and in the search bar type in um, adopt you know adoption program. I think it might also be lhcos.org slash adopt or slash adoption. Or you can DM us and we can give you the link. But yeah. those are adoptions, but you can also adopt from like Craigslist or Facebook Market as long as it's safe to do so and you're an adult, but yeah. yeah. For sure, because um, that would be good. All right, I'm gonna show you guys our dinner. Look, can you see it? Yeah, cool. Sorry guys, zooming in, there we go. We have shrimp. Breakfast taco. We have fruit salad on a bed of coconuts. And then over here we have a quinoa with pecan and mushrooms and cilantro. So just a reminder in our taco, we have shrimp, bell peppers, and scrambled eggs, jalapeno, carrots avocado and the shell is made out of an egg white so we would not actually put this entire plate in one Oops. in one tank this would be way too much food for hermit crabs oh, yeah. like a lot would go to waste but what we would do is cut this taco into pieces and then we would take these little sides and we put a little bit on on little plates for each of our tanks so so that i wish i was having that for dinner <laughs> right i think it actually would be pretty good yeah everything is human yeah, the only thing that might get you is if you don't like coconut, everything you know, was cooked in coconut oil. I mean, I like coconut. And then of course, if you don't like shell, uh, seafood, shellfish, then that would be probably not something that you would enjoy. But 
Guys, the Krabbies are gonna love this dinner. <laughs> yes. And look, we have so much left over. I don't know if y'all can see our table. There's so much left over. So, you know, this can be, you know, a meal for them for a long time. Or cook it up for yourself. Like mm, mango. <laughs> All right, we want to keep asking, do a few more questions. We're at, how long have we been? 45 minutes. Yeah, you have any more questions? So I gave my hermit crabs one cooked egg with three protein sides that is, uh, with the three protein sides that is spring lettuce mix, non-cooked corn and some carrots. Is that good for my Hermes? Sounds great. I mean, you'd want to mix it up, you know, you don't want to feed them the same thing every night, but yeah, awesome. Yep. And we have videos on food if you just want to watch those and make sure you've got everything too. Yeah, some other easy things that, you know, you can keep in your pantry that are going to last forever would be like raisins and like I said, the different kinds of nuts or seeds. Um, the quinoa, we did cook this quinoa, but they can eat it uncooked. So that will last forever um, in your pantry too. So. Mm -hmm. uh, what species do you have? Um, okay, purple pinchers and brevi, Ecuadorian, ruggy, strawberry, viola, lilas. Did I get them all? Uh, I think so. I think that. I think that. We haven't announced that last one yet. I know. So surprise. Surprise. Um, Non-cooked corn is okay. They'll eat it. They love it. Corn on the cob. Our guys love corn on the cob. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, what bugs are in your tank, Kathy? I didn't see your question. I just see someone responding to you. Do we feed leaf litter as well? We have leaf litter, it's just a staple, it's always in their tank. Um, and so we have a separate bowl where we keep um, flowers and, help me out, Brooke, cuddle bone and Wait, sorry, say leaves and bark, yeah. moss. And the worm castings and green sand. Yeah. Those are their staples. Yes. And millet. Mm -hmm. They live in foresty areas so they eat leaves and bark so quickly they love it so much yes uh, how do you know the gender so we will do a video on that eventually but it's best to message us so that we can actually show you a picture it's hard to explain without yeah. pictures I could tell you, but you really need to see where yeah. to look and what you're looking for. So, Frozen corn is okay, too. Um, pill bugs are in Kathy's tank. And you don't want them there or you do want them there? Yeah, those are isopods. Yeah, those are safe to be mm -hmm. in there. Processed raisins are safe because how would I know what raisins to get? So on the back of the box, you're just gonna look at the ingredients. And if the ingredient says raisins, those are good. If it says raisins and sugar and sulfate and anything else, then mm -hmm. you don't want those. Where can I get a viola? Good question. <laughs> I don't know, we adopted ours. So um, most of our exact species came from somebody who was fell on hard times and needed to rehome her hermit crabs and she knew of us through our channel and everything and so um, she reached out to see if we'd be able to adopt her hermit crabs and so that's how that's how we got ours. So. Mm -hmm. But maybe one day we can breathe some for you guys. Yeah we do have male and female of all of those species except for ruggy and strawberry. Mm -hmm. So those are the two that we wouldn't be able to yes. breed. However if maybe one of the strawberries change sexes or if we adopted one of Mary's in a few years, um, that might be possible. But we've only had two species actually produce eggs for us, the Brevi and the Ecuadorian. Mm -hmm. So hopefully this year we'll get some more eggs. All right. Do we live in the woods? We don't live in the <laughs> woods, actually. Whoops. 
Um, we, but we have family that live in the woods. <laughs> so we can go and visit them and forage for bark and leaves and things like that there, which we do all the time is great. And then, you know, we just clean it and bake it so that it doesn't, we don't bring any kind of hitchhikers into our tank that we don't want. Um, so, yeah. So Kathy has pill bugs in her tank and she doesn't want them there, but they keep coming back. The only way I think you could get rid of them would be to do a complete tank redo and any kind of wood items that you have in your tank, you could try and bake them, but I've known some people who did that and that they still came back. The eggs still hatched and, and came back. Um, so you might want to just get rid of those wood structures that they lay eggs in um, and then, you know, wash all the plastic items really well. When you get the sand out of your tank, you would have to wash your tank really well, uh, vinegar, diluted vinegar water mix. And um, of course you don't want to do that if you have any mulchers down because that would be dangerous and the pill bugs aren't going to hurt them. So, you know, you would want to wait until they come up from their molt. Um, so some people are confused about the changing genders thing. <laughs> you want to explain? Yeah, so it's crazy, but hermit crabs can actually change their gender through molting. So we don't really know why they choose to do this. I mean, I would guess it would be just for survival and they would need it to, you know, reproduce out in the wild. Um, so we're kind of hoping one of our strawberries will do that since there's the only the two of them that one of them might say, oh, we need more of us. So I guess I'll be a girl now <laughs> and then figure it all out. But yeah, we don't really know what causes them to that, but we have proof of hermit crabs that have changed mm -hmm. their um, gender through molting. We and, ourselves don't, but we know people that do. Right, yes. And um, the way that they've done this is there's actually setae patterns on their um, big pincher, which are like the little bumps on their big pincher. You can actually take a close-up picture of that, and it's kind of like a fingerprint for your hermit crab, the setae pattern. And so if you track the setae pattern, then you will know which crab it is when they come back from molt, even if they've changed their shell or their different size or different color even. We've had crab come back like different colors. Well, you guys have seen that. Anyways, but the setae pattern will stay the same. And so you'll know that that's the same crab. And then if you knew they were, you know, one gender when they went down from the molt, and then when they came back, they're a different gender. And so that's how we know for sure um, that some people have had their crabs change genders. Mm -hmm. Is it okay to purchase hermit crabs from Petco? I mean, we don't um, support that ourselves because it's just, part of the vicious cycle of the whole industry. And we're really about advocating um, for proper care of hermit crabs and for changing that, which is why we got into the, you know, into breeding. And we thought, you know, if we're really for that, then we have to, we have to be a part of it. We have to be a part of the change. And so that's why we're willing to invest in the whole breeding program and our time and, and everything. Um, but basically what happens is, you know, they capture the hermit crab from the wild and then they store them in these horrible warehouses that don't have the correct heat or humidity or food or water or anything that they basically need to live. And then they basically just keep them in these warehouses until they collect enough of them um, to ship out to all the stores that have ordered them. Well, then they, you know, if you guys have seen, you know, the videos, but they crack them out of their natural shells and put them into the, force them into the horrible painted ones which is toxic for them and completely stresses them out. And a lot of times, you know, during that whole process, they have gill damage or some other kind of puncture into their soft abdomen and, and horrible damage like that. Then they shove them into a burlap sack, which has no heat or humidity at all, no food, no water. And then they ship them in the mail, which could take, you know, weeks, whatever, any time of the year, you know, it's winter. And so then when they finally get to the pet store, as you've noticed, they continue to be poorly cared for without the correct humidity or heat. And so it just, when you buy them from the store, then Petco wants to replace that because they're about making money. So if you keep buying them, they're going to keep replenishing their stock. So the only way to stop that horrible process is if we, if every, all of us stop buying them mm -hmm. from the pet stores. Can there be hybrid hermit crab species? Good question. We don't know. So, um, not that we have witnessed so far. Yeah. Scientifically, 
speaking, it's probably not possible because they're different species and not different, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, breeds. Those are different categories and different species are usually not able to interbreed, but then again, you have the horse and the mule, I mean the horse and the donkey that can. So we don't know, it might be possible. All right. Okay, let's do one more question. Oh, only one more. Oh, oh there's so okay. many questions. Okay. We have five minutes until now. You want to go for five minutes? Okay, well, we have our last thing we have to do at the very end. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Okay. Uh, what is the best way to express interest to marry or get on our waiting list about captive bred babies? Um, again, that same adoption link um, in our videos you can you can go ahead to that link and it gives you an application to apply for them mm -hmm. so, so for mary's babies there you, you basically only have to wait till the harsh winter because it's too cold right now to ship them um but you know if you live close to one of the facil the adoption facilitators like we are for the central texas area um like i have some 2019 babies that are can be adopted out and so i could meet up with somebody close to me and then that would be okay um, but as far as shipping them in the mail we can't do that during the winter so you'd have to wait till you know it warms up in the spring yep but there's an application and we can send it to you if you want one uh want it but yeah that you can adopt some now uh let's see i'm gonna look for one more question Looking for the best question here. <laughs> oh, wait, Mango. While we're waiting. While we're waiting. Let's see, last minute questions. Having a hard time finding some, we just have comments. Can hermit crabs be released back into the wild? Um, hmm. I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. They, typically, when you're thinking about releasing animals that have been in captivity for a while, it's not a good idea. They could introduce new diseases or problems into the wild colony and it also could make them more vulnerable vulnerable because they're used to not having natural predators so it's really not a good idea to do that like i know some of our hermit crabs for sure they're much more social now they don't you know immediately scurry away or hide in their shell or whatever so i don't know if that would you know harm them if they were to go back in the wild and not know exactly yeah. exactly what to do so it's really not best. Yeah. yeah, best if you don't. But I will tell you something. If you have extra shells, I know that hermit crabs in the wild need shells. So you can definitely place empty shells back out in the wild for them. Okay, are we ready for this? Okay, one more question. Are we going to be making weekly videos from now on? Oh, man. <laughs> the last Probably question. Not. Probably not, to be honest with you. So, I mean, I work full time and my girls are full time students um, and Faith's in college and has a job. And um, actually, Brooke's getting really busy in her season two um, with robotics. So this is kind of her busiest time of the year. So, videos once a week was kind of a lot on our family. It was super fun during Christmas and we had a blast doing that. And um, hopefully, we can definitely get videos out more often than what we had been. We have a lot of content already recorded, and so we're getting faster at editing as we get more practice with it. So I hope that we can get more videos out for you guys, but I don't want to make any promises I can't keep. So, all right. Okay, we have one little surprise for you. So we kind of wrote this little story. It's a Crabmas story for y'all, and it's based off of, um, it was the night before Christmas. So here we go. All right, was the night before Christmas when all through the tank, the hermit crabs were stirring and their shells went clink. The glass was cleaned and handled with care. 
in hopes that Sandy Claus would soon be there. The Krabbies settled in their hidey hut beds while images of new shells danced in their heads. And Crab Maw and Crab Paws said with a clap, the time has come for our Christmas Eve nap. When upon the roof of the tank arose such a clatter, the crabs emerged from their beds to see what was the matter. The airline tubing they climbed up in a dash, popped open the lid and slid out with a flash. The moonlight glistened on the room like snow, giving the illusion of midday to objects below. When what to the crabs wondering eyes should appear? But a miniature shell sleigh and seven tiny crab deers with a little old driver that caused them to pause. They knew in a moment this was Sandy Claus. More rapid than eagles in his coursers they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Tumbleweed, now Tex, now Bluebell in Austin, on Sweet Tea, on Lone Star, on Bevo and Howdy. Dash away, dash away, dash away all. Merry Crabmas to all and to all a good night. Guys, thanks so much for joining us during our Crabmas Mondays. And as always, we really appreciate your support in our channel. And we love that you're out there loving your hermit crabs and sharing awareness with others as well. So we just truly appreciate you guys and wish you a very Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays and a wonderful new year. And um, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, so you guys can get notices when we put out new videos or follow us on our social media so you can see pictures and lives and um, those links that you guys ask about, a lot of times we put them there as well. So yeah, follow us on our social medias. And until then, you guys, like have a great winter break and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for joining us. Bye.